Courtney farewell. <laughs> Off on her journey, blessed by the best. High in the sky with a salute from the bold. <laughs> Off to the new world with a wave from the old. Here she comes, where the torch of liberty beckons. Beckons her to the land of the free. Beckons her to the home of the brave. Beckons her to the capital of entertainment. Through the golden glow of the Tinseltown twilight, down to her Beverly Hills mansion, comes the megastar's megastar. Yes, inviting us to drop by her place once again is talk show hostess, guru, and confidant of the rich and famous, Dame Edna Everett. A lady in a hurry, hurrying to bring her gifts of caring and sharing to her guests and audience alike. Hurrying to star in her own show in her own home. It's Dame Edna's Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from her home in Beverly Hills, Dame Edna Everett. Hello! gentlemen, twirling his baton in my vestibule, it's Ringo Starr! <laughs> Hello, Ringo. Hello. Hello, boys. You're looking good, Dame Edna. Oh, I'm feeling good, Ringo, but oh, good. I, I'm going to take this show off. We don't want any music tonight, oh. because there won't be a show. No guests, I'm afraid. Bad news, you don't need to wear that tuxedo, Ringo. Oh, I can get out of it then. You don't. There's no dressing up tonight. I mean, you might say I'm dressed, but I mean, this is just some old rag I threw on. It's an old $20,000 frock. As a matter of fact, I only wear it when I eat pizza, and I've ordered a scrummy pizza tonight. And my companion in solitude, my butler, Burgess Meredith! <laughs> Have you cancelled my guests, as I told you, Burgess? Now, just a moment, ma'am. Yes. I, I got oh, on the oh, telephone, please, please. And, and you know that Burgess, I didn't get around stop for trying it. to build up your part. You've cancelled them, and that's the main thing. I have a quiet evening to myself. Thank you, Burgess. Back to your butler's pantry, please, darling. I've got bad news. Go. I've got bad news. Bad news. He probably yes. wants a raise. That's my bad God. news for him. <laughs> well, what a wonderful lineup of guests I've cancelled tonight. Tonight I've cancelled Kim Basinger. <laughs> and I've, I've cancelled Chevy Chase. I've cancelled Rue McClanahan. And, yes, and I've even been bold enough to cancel Robin yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you for so warmly endorsing those cancellations. <laughs> oh, it's bliss being here now. It's very relaxing. I'm just going to put my feet up and have a little therapy with my in-house shrink, head of my shrink tank, Dr. Joyce Brother. <laughs> Oh, hello, Doctor. Dame Edna, how do you feel? <laughs> how do I feel? Oh, the inner crybaby is giving me a bit of trouble now, Dr. Joyce. I mean, people don't care. They don't. They just take, take, take. I can't live with these parasites, Dr. Joyce. I'm being used by so many people. Well, Dame Edna, you say people, people take, take, take. But when have you given? I think I pay you to listen to me, not to talk to me. <laughs> I do. You know, Dame Edna, now that you bring it up, 
You haven't been paying me. What? You're a mercenary woman, you grasping shrink. Get out of my house. I'm sick of you, quack. What's that? Bell's in my head now. Oh, dear. I hear these ringing noises. Oh, Burgess. Burgess, take this doctor out. Now, your Shut first guess, the... Miss Kim Bassinger. I thought you'd cancelled her. I did. woman she is, isn't she? I'm looking forward to my next session already. I feel something very exciting is about to happen, possums. Ladies and gentlemen, she's hot, she's heavenly, and she's huge. Above all, she's here, gorgeous Kim Basinger! Oh, she's been in the tub for hours and hours. She gets all grey and wrinkly. I don't know why she bothers. She's always grey and wrinkly. Thank you, Kim. There you are. Well, I'll just put it there, darling. Oh, oh, thanks. There's something different about you, Kim Basinger. And it's your hair, I think, darling. Yes. It is. Oh, yes. It's lovely. It's a new style. Yes, it is. Is there a story behind your short hair? Well, I'm, I'm shedding my past, yes. You're shedding your past. So that, oh, your little label fell off. Never mind. We'll just let me put it there, darling. However, <laughs> it's a pity to put it on your erogenous zone. <laughs> it is. What's, what's the matter, darling? Can I give you this? I'm really dying to do this. This is really for you, and I have, I've really searched for a long time for the right girl to give that to, and it's very important that, uh... May I peep at it? Yes. It's lovely. Of course my eye fell on it when you came in. Yes, you did ask me. <laughs> my eye fell on a few things, as a matter of fact. <laughs> what is it? Isn't this exciting, viewers? <laughs> oh, Kim, it's a, it's a gorgeous little... It's a little intimate garment. Yes, sir. It I seems mean... to have a bit of makeup on it, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> is it... been worn, I think. <laughs> oh, it's even got lipstick on it, Kim. <laughs> Still, it's a nice thought. What's the, what's the story behind this, darling? It's the original slip from, um, nine and a half weeks. <laughs> original slip? What a marvellous souvenir of that raunchy and exciting film. <laughs> <laughs> you can wear that. You are delightful, Kim. Madge has got her eye on this. She has. Can I ask you something? Yes. Where did you get those glasses? Well, I have them designed. My face furniture, I call them. And, you know, the world looks rather spooky and special through my glasses, and you look lovely in them. I'm going to send you a pair. Yes, I'll make sure the glasses I send you are used, like the underwear you sent me. <laughs> but, Kim... I could have washed it. I, I, I thought maybe you'd prefer not. Uh, no, I quite like it as it is in a spooky way. Did you see... <laughs> Your hair. 
It's an intimate part of our bodies, though, isn't it? I want to get back to that little haircut of yours. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's called our crowning glory when it's on our heads, of course, when it's elsewhere. Goodness knows what it's called. But uh, <laughs> it's an intimate relationship, isn't it? It's an intimate relationship we have with our hairdressers. Yes. And with our, our dentists, come to think of it. Do you know I had a more intimate relationship with my dentist than I did with my own husband? Because I never let him put his fingers so far down my mouth as my dentist did. <laughs> or any of his equipment, for that matter. But, no, no, I'm sorry. Please, for heaven's sake. Oh, make something of that, if you will. I mean, dental they equipment. They are. <laughs> you I suppose, can I say this? Really the most famous and gorgeous movie star on the planet, Kim. And yet you began life as a model. Um, did you love modelling? Did you enjoy being a model rather than an actress? I hated it. Hated it. <laughs> Why? I didn't like... I, I wanted my inside to come out rather than just always photographing the outside. But yet, like a lot of people who photograph beautiful, beautiful, you look beautiful, and I think it's a little bit of brain power. Too, because a pretty face isn't much without that old grey jelly throbbing away inside the head. Is it? <laughs> and the camera loves, well, it loved a lot of you in six and a half weeks, didn't it? Nine. Sorry? Nine Three more weeks. Oh, yes, but I left. I left three Before more weeks. Three more weeks. Over, as a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> I left a bit early. It was getting a little bit raunchy for me. <laughs> I am a sore. I only saw six and a half of those weeks, but they were quite enough for me. <laughs> and I suspect almost enough for little Kim Basinger, too. Almost killed me. Well, do you think it influenced a lot of people's <clears throat> in intimate behaviour? Maybe intimate apparel, but I don't know the other, no. Well, it might have. You can't judge, can you? But, of course... Did it give you any? Well, in a funny way, I have to tell you. What did you do? After you copied that of nine and a half weeks. I didn't copy anything. It happened before. It, we want to know, don't we? <laughs> Yay! Who are you talking to? <laughs> talking to an empty wall and an orchestra. <laughs> we want to know, don't we? <laughs> well, a funny thing happened. You know, my husband, uh, towards the end, was getting up a lot in the middle of the night. And... Uh, <laughs> I used to, as therapy, you know, to get a lot of my anger out. I used to do the housework and I was scrubbing the kitchen floor in the dark and Norm came, opened the fridge to get himself something and he tripped over me. My, br my brunch coat flew open <laughs> and he dropped one dozen eggs and a jar of mayonnaise onto me. He did. <laughs> It was horrible. It was. Only after we saw nine and a half did we realise it was rather raunchy. We hadn't realised that. I hadn't realised that Norm had been trying to tell me something, Kim. I should have brought you some, I should have brought you some honey. Well, more about the honey and more about my beautiful guest, Kim, after this break. Oh, that's lovely, Kim. It doesn't feel the same when Madge does it. Has Kim Basinger found the right man? Have you? At the moment, I hope so. It? I hope so too. I hope so. What qualities do you look for in a man? The sense of humor is the most important thing. I oh, think. I think it is too. But men can be manipulative. They can be cunning. So can women. We all can be. We can, but, you know, I never realised that my late husband was manipulative. <laughs> I never thought so until, well, one day I came home unexpectedly. Well, I was always coming home unexpectedly. <laughs> but this time, I, I came home when even I didn't expect to come home. <laughs> and, and my husband was alone in the bedroom being manipulative. He was. <laughs> thought he'd had dark rings under his eyes for <laughs> weeks. I never mention it again. But you're an independent girl, aren't you? And you run your own life, you write your own scripts, don't you? You have your own company. Is power important to you? 
I think, I think power is pretty important in this town, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this town, we're talking a lot of people. What does very... power mean? That, that, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. <laughs> what are you into, I, madam? I feel your power surging here. Your... <laughs> I thought I was a normal woman until I met this girl. But uh, we are Renaissance women because we've got lots of projects. I've got a lot of projects on the back burner, on the front burner, the fridge, the microwave, in development, <laughs> out of development, in turn around, on hold, on hiatus, in discussion, in the pipeline, waiting for the green light. I have. <laughs> You have a big project that you've done. It's to do with a town, Kim. Yes. You bought a town. Yes. <laughs> that might have been a little bit more trouble than it was worth. But yes. <laughs> why did you buy that town? I wanted to preserve it. It's a beautiful part of the South. That's a pretty good reason. It's an <laughs> impulsive, romantic reason for doing mm -hmm. something. And it's a little bit irrational. I think that's what I like crazy. about it. I could help you here because, silly me, I bought a town as well some years ago. <laughs> I did. I bought my own hometown in Australia called Mooney Ponds. <laughs> and uh, did the people of Brazelton, did they like being bought? I think it was a 60-40 decision. <laughs> well, I can tell you the people of Mooney Ponds didn't know because I bought it at night when they were asleep. I did. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that. Uh, they woke up, uh, they went to bed as people and they woke up as exhibits. <laughs> so this is a part of your power hunger. I mean, you want something named after you and people well, coming forever to see we're thinking of calling you. it Edinburgh. Oh. Well, yeah, it's sort of like Disneyland, except nobody smiles. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, what's that? I'm sorry. That's an alarm. That's an alert. Man, scramble, scramble. Hello? Sorry, excuse me, Kim. Who is it? Oh, I'm on the air. I'm on the air. I'm sorry. I'm talking to Kim. Speak up. Oh, it's George Hamilton. <laughs> He's my next door neighbor. Hello, George. I thought you were bungee jumping on the Grand Canyon. How are you? <laughs> what? Yes, I'll be straight over. I've got to go. Madge! Okay. Madge! Quick sticks! Madge. You look almost as old as the original cast of Star Trek. Look at you. Oh. Quick. Quick, we'll have to go. Off you go, quickly. I'll only be about 20 minutes, Kim. Uh, Ringo, Kim, entertain each other, will you, darling? <laughs> I must hurry. George Hamilton is trapped in his sunbed. <laughs> Not that way, Madge, you stupid woman. You're treading something. That's where the peacocks go to the bathroom. Over here. I've got a key to that gate, you destructive woman. Wait for me. Wait for me, Madge. You think George leaves his door open? The grappling hook, you stupid woman! The grappling hook! Stupid <laughs> <laughs> you snail! Madge, your father was a sailor, for heaven's sake. Get up there like a rat up a rhododendron. Faster, faster! Oh, it's unnatural. <laughs> that woman's the missing link. She's spider woman. Go on, Madge, break that window now. I'm not paying for that. Not the way you broke it. What's that scrubby smell? Somebody's cooking. It smells like a juicy hamburger. No, it isn't. It's George Hamilton. Madge, come on down. Come down and open the door. You took a long time. <laughs> help! Help me! Help! Help! We're coming, darling. Who's that? It's Edna, so your neighbor. Scary. Lift it, Madge, lift it. Oh. Go and pump iron, Madge. Work up those muscles. Oh, George. 
I thought oh. I was going to burn oh. to death in there. I can't move can't it, move darling. It. Madge will do it soon. Madge, help me, will you? What's the matter with this machine? Well, this is a new one I'm working on called Hamilton. I, I, I've got it working so it comes down like a waffle machine, but it won't go back up. Is it your own invention? Yes, my own, my own. Mm, there's obviously a glitch in the system, yeah, George. Yeah, it's a teething problem. Oh, how did your career begin, George Hamilton? You're, you're not doing an interview, are you? It's a way of soothing your nerves. What were your name? Well, uh, it's just hi, a hoax. This is George Hamilton, Hamilton for Fast Ant. This is my particular sun tanning cream. Oh, please. I no, no. I also use that exfoliant. No commercials, I'm afraid, George. We can't have blatant promotion oh, on my well, show. Okay. George, what's that bathrobe doing here? That's mine. Oh, 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 That's my bathrobe. Oh, I was going to bring it back. Oh, yes, like the cup of sugar I lent you about a year ago. You haven't returned that yet. I had guests there. I had guests. I've got guests now. I'm doing a talk show. Madge, quickly. Quickly, Madge. I'm sorry. Excuse I, George. I'll see you later, darling. How am I going to get out of here? Help me. George, I'll be back. We'll remember. Don't worry. We'll remember to Help come back. Help me. Help me. Help me. thing. I hope he manages to struggle out of that. I hate to admit failure, but I have failed him, I'm afraid. He'll be beef jerky very soon. <laughs> Mind you, beef jerky, many women would be very happy to chew. <laughs> well, Burgess. Hello, yes, darling. My love. Oh, my yeah. What's that you've got a oh, note? I've got something. For, oh, I forgot. Oh, I thought you might have Thank forgotten. You're getting behind. Dear Edna, by the time you read this, I, it will be too late. Oh, how ghastly. <laughs> I hung on for nine and a half minutes. It seemed like nine and a half weeks. <laughs> See you at Spargo's, Kim. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, okay. Impatient little minx. But meanwhile, our next uncancelled guest, ladies and gentlemen, it's the chivalrous, the charming, the chatty, the cherubic and cheeky Chevy Chase! <laughs> Sit down here, darling. Oh. The badge, Madge. Oh, it's my bridesmaid. To get it myself. Oh, I've got a handbag. Oh, this purse. Oh, like a glimpse of hell, this woman's purse. Oh, there's your little label. I'll just put it on here, darling. Corn, I happen to know. I've done my homework. And I happen to know your real name is Cornelius. I do. <laughs> You're very visible now, and I love what I see, but you've been invisible not all that long ago. Oh, that's right. I think I like you even more when you're invisible than now that you are visible. But if you were invisible, are there a few little things you'd like to do? Boy, I don't know. The first, the first thing I think that would come to me would be to sneak into your boudoir. Oh, Chevy. <laughs> I'd fly in there. Would you? I'd fly in there and I'd give you a high colonic you would never forget. What? I, 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 I had no answer for that. That's a very well, tough question. I... Let's just sit here and meditate for a moment. <laughs> if I were invisible, and by the way, if you're invisible and you flitted into my boudoir, you could do as you will with me. Oh, Chevy. God bless you. But, up to a point, but, <laughs> you give the impression of uh, being tiny? very tidy, no, neat, oh, neat, and well turned out. Why, thank you. Does that conceal a, well, a restless spirit, perhaps an inner untidy person? Is there something a little bit disorderly inside you? This is an in-depth question. <laughs> well, if I may answer it, uh... You may. You've got uh, there's, all the there's time a in the world. There's a corner of my, my mind that's untidy. There are mice in there, and uh, 
Of course, uh, there's a kind of an untidiness in my drawers. In drawers? Yes, my, my bureau drawers. Oh, your bureau yeah. drawers. I thought that's an old-fashioned no, expression. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean uh, my drawers. There's a, you know, there's a wholesomeness, too, which I think is deceptive about you. Yes, absolutely. Because I think there are probably unwholesome little mice in your drawers as well. <laughs> there's a little mouse in my drawers right now, yeah. But there... Kim has left quite a bit of equipment lying around. But I... <laughs> I thought maybe I'd sat on a mouse when I first sat down, then I went, couldn't be. <laughs> there are people in your business who wouldn't mind that at all. That's right. However... And, and who would they be? Who would they be? I don't know if I would know them. You wouldn't know I them. Wouldn't know I them. wouldn't know them, and I never listen to those stories invented by malicious people. Would anybody on this stage know those people? No. No. Not at this time. Particularly this since it isn't a stage, it's a private home. However. Oh. Sorry. Your children. However. Be that as it may, wholesomeness. Let's get it back. I'm so glad to be here. I just can't wait to hear what the next question is and the answer. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, my intellect has been stretched in so many directions. <laughs> by you in one direction and by little Kim in another. <laughs> What was that on her, uh, her navel? It was there? a little... her navel? Yeah. It was a tattoo. It was a real tattoo? I think it was real, but I didn't have time to spit on it and rub it hard. Ah. Now we're talking. I think... Now we're talking. But you would have liked to, wouldn't you? I... you know... Well, this will be cut out, Shabby, won't it? this will be cut out, yeah, so I'll Yeah, but you'd like to suck that tattoo right off. Though. I would have. I know that feeling. I think you would have got there first, though, Chevy. Oh, I, I think there. so. I would have been there with nothing on. <laughs> there are senior citizens watching this. <laughs> God help them. There are. My servants, for example. <laughs> now... Gaga! What? Gaga! Oh, come down. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my granddaughter, Yasmin Everidge. <laughs> This is Mr. This is Mr. Chevy Chase. Hello. This is Yasmin. Hi, Yasmin. How are you? Oh. Nice to meet you. Come over here, Yasmin. What is it, darling? Sit on my knee. Shall I leave? No, stay there. All darling. right. Sit there. Oh, oh. People say she's the image of me. I don't see it. I don't see it either. I don't. She takes after some other strange branch of the family, not mine. What is it, Yasmin? I want a glass of milk and a cookie, Gaga. <laughs> A glass of milk and a cookie, certainly. Madge! Off you go with Auntie Madge. Read her a bedtime story, some old New Zealand folk tale. It's the story of your life. That'll put her to sleep. Bye, Gaga. Oh, Gaga. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> oh, look at Madge trying to come between me and my granddaughter. Typical, typical. <laughs> So is Burgess Meredith. It's a tug of love household, this. It's the eternal rectangle here. Now, you're a professional poker player, Chevy. No, I I'm not. Know. No. You play Oh, cards. you're being so... Well, not professional, but you love playing poker. But yes. Do you play it alone? Mm. No. You're, no. You're looking for something here. You play it with a little group. I don't I know do. about I, poker. Yes, I we, we have a little one. group. Who's in that group now? Steve. Steve. Johnny. Martin. Maybe. Johnny. Johnny. Oh, you've got me there. Mm. <laughs> yes, name someone that, that famous. Was smart. Carl Reiner. Carl Reiner. Uh, Neil Simon. Oh, the, ne the Neil Simon mm -hmm. who, with Simon and Garfunkel. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. I play, a, <laughs> I play a game with a little group of women. Little high-powered women. Uh, once a week, we have a weekly twister game. Do you know the game Twister? Yeah. yeah. You play it on a sort of plastic waterproof mat, a bit like, a bit like an incontinence sheet. And you... <laughs> you don't know about that yet, but... Um, you put it... 
coat. <laughs> and you put it down on the ground. It's got circles and different colors on it. Is it absorbent? Uh... Absor probably. Yes. And, <laughs> and you sort of put one foot there and another foot there. And it's lots of fun. I play it with Madge, my bridesmaid, and Gloria Stein and Barbara Walters, Goldie Horn, <laughs> Martina Navratilova. <laughs> She's very keen. And uh, talking of Johnny, um, who was that Johnny? Well, I can't remember his name. You've guest hosted a talk show, haven't you? Oh, children? I tried, yeah. Yes, it's yeah. not easy, no, is it? it's not easy. Well, you must well know that because you're doing all the talking. Well, you see, what's good about a good talk show host is that they allow the other person to get in a word edgewise. <laughs> That's one theory, anyway, Timmy. No, please, I'm not a talk show host. I do other things for a living. But what I really meant was that Johnny is a good talk show host because he listens well and makes his guests look good, and I really stink at that. I wasn't good You at look it. good in hard. spite of my efforts to the contrary, darling. You do. <laughs> it's just that I have a different theory. I think of a talk show as, well, as a monologue interrupted by total strangers. <laughs> I... No, no. This is one of my theories. I'm writing a bit of a treatise on it. But being, being a male host is easier. Being a female talk show hostess has got its hazards. Because you can get, oh, undesirables can come on. That's why this whole house is booby-trapped, Chevy. Uh -oh. If someone comes on that I don't like the look of, yeah. darling... What happens? I'm afraid I terminate them. Uh -oh. I do. I've got some technology here. It's very high-powered. You to be see a this? Artist. Look, look at this. Ooh. Now this is my security scanner. This button operates my front gates. <laughs> this redirects the traffic, so guests arrive and they go straight off in the other direction again. <laughs> I can't remember what this button was for. Well, why don't you, do you push it? No, no. I'll I don't go ahead and push it. All right, I will. Go ahead. <laughs> I've ejected Chevy. Oh, dear. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, viewers. I should have remembered this button is, is strictly for emergencies only. They told me only to use it if Mickey Rooney was on the show. <laughs> well, we'll find out what's happened to Chevy after this break. <laughs> listeners. Here I am alone, except for my bridesmaid, who doesn't count. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Off you go, Burgess. Oh, Chevy has been recovered from the sewers. <laughs> and uh, they're putting him back together again with the aid of old passport photos. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> well, well. Now it's time for me to, to introduce my next uncancelled guest, Rue McLaren! <laughs> Isn't this a thrill? It's very exciting. I'm such a fan. Here. My dear Rue. The badge, Madge, the badge, for heaven's sake. Oh, I can't wait to see what you're going to call me. <laughs> well, what oh, have we got? Oh, isn't that funny? Well, it's there. Yeah. I couldn't find Rue, but I've got <laughs> Tanya. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You don't know what an honor this is. I admire you so. Particularly the way you dress, your whole getup. I think you, you show such nerve. <laughs> I do hope by the time I'm your age, I have that kind of daring, that kind of joie de vivre. Oh, I think it's highly commendable. Lovely. <laughs> what a fascinating little talker you are, too. <laughs> you are. That's what I like in your... That's the other thing I like about you, the fact that gift for gab, you know, I'm sure you agree with me. What's her name again? Madge. Madge, yes, I'm sure. Madge knows well, what I'm talking about. me, I think, not you, really. <laughs> It is a gift, you know. Well, they say the Irish have it. You're not Irish by any 
chance? I could be, because I think if you shake anyone's family tree, an Irish woman falls out of it. <laughs> we had another southern belle here. Oh, yes? We had little Kim Basinger. Yes, I heard that southern accent. Well, she was here, and you're a bit of a southerner, a sort of Irish southerner. Uh, truly, yes, I am. Well, I'm from Oklahoma. I suppose that's southern enough. Well, that lovely character of yours, Blanche, though. Oh, yes, well, she's from Georgia. She is from Georgia. Yeah, I think she's from Atlanta. Oh, They've never really quite decided, but I sort of think of her as Atlanta because of, you know, Gone with the Wind. You know, it has to be Atlanta. I it think. would be. Oh, it has to be. I love that show, Golden Oldies of yours. <laughs> and I... Oh, something like that. There's a that. place for you, you know. You know... <laughs> Is there? Oh, uh, yes, I think so. You think you I could think we squeeze me that. into that show? I, if you're nice to me, I just might do it. I'd love to be on it because, <laughs> you know, a lot of casting people watch my show. Oh, I'm sure. And so people who come on the show, like little Chevy and little Kim, big career opportunities open up for them. <laughs> they do. I might say. As a matter of fact, when I did my own show, they gave me my own show. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it led to my own show. My own show led to my own show. Well, this is it, isn't it? This is it, yes. yes I thought so. Aren't I fortunate? <laughs> um, but I'd love to be on your little Golden Girls. I think it could be arranged. Well, I've always thought women have a bit more of a sense of humour. After all, we bring life into the world, don't we? <laughs> I don't see what one has to do with the other, Edna. Well, neither do I, having just said it. But... <laughs> a connection deep down in my intelligence. Could I ask you something totally off the subject? I've always wondered, what's the difference in a dame and a lady? Well, a dame is a title. It's something, in fact, given to me by the Queen of England. Really? Whereas a lady, that's another title, but it's not nearly as important. So if I wanted to be somebody, that's what I should aspire to? You aspire to live in England for a little bit, and, and I happen to know she watches. In the palace, she watches Golden oh, Girls. Oh, you fill my heart. And, and I'll are tell you, you, you... I, yes, and one thing I'm going to tell you, and she won't mind me saying this, you're watching. Hello. Um, <laughs> she'd like to guest on Golden Girls. She would. <laughs> well, just briefly, a cameo from the Queen of England. Can you imagine that? You're a stylish woman. I was, or well, I you am? You are stylish, <laughs> isn't she? Very stylish. <laughs> What do you enjoy wearing most? What kind of outfits? The, the less I have to wear, the happier I am. You know what I mean? I don't like to wear undergarments or pantyhose, that sort of thing. No? No. I don't like anything restrictive. I like just to wear... I love tank tops. That's what this is, you know? It's a it's tank, tank top. top. A pair of pants. I remember and, uh, them. They're so lovely. <laughs> a, they're still in, you know. They're still in. Of course yes, they, they are. are. You're but wearing them there in room? It, well, I'll make them be. It's just very simple. I like to dress very comfortably and simply. So do I. This is one of my oldest dresses, as I said at the beginning of the really? show. Oh, it looks brand new. Well, it's lovely. It's my equivalent of jeans and a T-shirt. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to copy That's anyone. Where is, that is Madge's best frock. <laughs> There's something very sad about that. You can say that again. However, <laughs> she came in the other day, I have to tell you this, wearing a little grey bolero top. Oh. And I thought, I've seen that grey wool before. It was my husband's briefs she was wearing. <laughs> Upside down, she put her arms. She put her arms through the leg holes, and she'd forced her little head through the slit. Uh, she had. And yet, you know, she has such poise. Stop talking about Madge for goodness' sake. You're an active, busy woman. What would you be doing if you weren't here tonight? Uh, excuse me, me. Are you Miss Taylor? Miss Elizabeth Taylor? I'm sorry. Blue, oh, blue velvet. 
Pizza. Where's Larry? Come on down, Larry! Is Michael here in Hi. some form or another? <laughs> I bring him down. Michael, you're bad! <laughs> Michael, I ordered a pizza, you're but bad. this is ridiculous, Possum! Oh, God! You! I love you! You play with wings! <laughs> Again, okay? <laughs> I give you this pizza. And for your happy birthday, Miss Taylor. You are so good. Everything you do. Wait, hold on. You do smell like passion. <laughs> Whoa! I watch out. <laughs> Make it hard to walk out of here. <laughs> I'm oh. like the Chinese algebra. <laughs> you know. I think I've lost control of my own phone. <laughs> I do. Oh, you have it, Rico. It's serious. Everybody, give Liz your love. <laughs> give her her love. <laughs> Look, will you say it? It's over her. No! It's Robin Williams! Right, Liz? No, please, Liz. Just one picture. Come on, one picture. <laughs> no, Liz, don't you understand? This is a picture of you and Nancy, and I can pay for the house. God, jeez. <laughs> Just a picture of you and Nancy. God damn it, please, just one picture. Oh, there it is, there it is. Oh, wait, the flash. Oh, one more picture. Just a picture of Nancy alone. Oh, that's good. And then we could superimpose that in the pool. You don't mind, do you? I could sell this all in the Inquirer. We could put all of it in this beautiful, your beautiful woman. Robin. Don't... Robin. You've been trying to get on my show for months and months. You disguise yourself as a, an ethnic minority. <laughs> You force, you gate crash my home. You dominate my lovely evening. Robin, I'm ashamed of you. But now you're here. Please. And because I adore you, Robin, stop using that ridiculous Italian accent, Robin. <laughs> I was just trying to get a green card. <laughs> Robin, you're an angel. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my gate crasher, Robin Williams! Move up a little, darling. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'd like you to sit in a place of honor, Robin. <laughs> sit in a place of honor, darling, will you? Oh, okay. Just relax and we'll have a nice thank interview. You. Oh, Just so there is nothing adjust. like a dame. <laughs> <laughs> I Just have to adjust something here, okay. Robin. at the height of our powers as artists. We're all at the height of our powers, really. My gynecologist told me the other day that I was at the height of my powers. I don't know what yours told you. Well, is it true Robin? that an older gynecologist is much better because the older they are, the... <laughs> <laughs> you mean the more their hands shake? Well, that makes it more interesting, I would think. <laughs> well, I can tell you it does. Burgess does my exploratories. <laughs> <laughs> you're energetic and you're volatile. You're a kaleidoscopic <laughs> nightmare, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I adore you. But is there a moment of stillness for you, Robin? Is there a moment... It's hard to imagine, but is there a moment when Robin Williams is tranquil, at rest? I feel good about myself most of the time. I, I do have those quiet moments. I think that's important. And I believe in what little Abraham Lincoln said. One of your... Doc. Well... <laughs> There was one of the things he said, and he all... I dropped my program! <laughs> if only he had. Yeah, I know. The course of history would have changed. He said most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. I like that. 
But you know, you never stop working. One film after another, one triumph, a lot of peaks, and I'm on the threshold of my movie career here. I, I might be a little bit old to go into movies, but no, I'm going no, to give no, it my no. best shot. And what movie will this be? Well, there's some I've been offered. I've been offered the Dead Megastars Society. <laughs> it's... It's a bit of a... Diem, it's, a check. it's a sequel. <laughs> Those are all the things I think you should tell. I'd never be afraid. Hausman, John Hausman, a man who taught at Juilliard. He was, I think, in his 70s. And I remember him speaking to the school. He would say, boys, girls, the theater needs you. I'm going off to sell Volvos. <laughs> never be afraid to basically get out and sell yourself. Never. <laughs> Real. What would you say I should do once I'm, you know, for my first big Hollywood picture? I would say that no matter what you do, Dame Edna, the important thing is not to lose hope, as you say, not to lose your perseverance, and to keep your pecker up. Good luck with that one. <laughs> this is advice that would cost a fortune. <laughs> But act natural, I think that's the On the other point. hand, I think unremunerated advice is worthless. What was that I heard you say? What was that gem from Rue McClanahan? Something my mother always told me, which oh. is just to act natural. As you said, be yourself. Act naturally? Absolutely. Oh, I think that... Isn't there music to that, Ringo? I think we have a little something for you. Ready, boys? Out of you. We'll make a film about a girl that's sad and lonely. 